It is estimated around 18 million people live in mobile home parks in the United States and the demand is only growing as affordable housing becomes more scarce. What's up everybody, Steve with Steve Invest helping real estate agents, brokers, and real estate investors grow their businesses. Look, when investing in mobile home parks, there are really two types. You got one which is lot rent, and the other one is park owned, and then you have a third which is essentially a combination or a hybrid of both. Lot rent, it's a rental agreement for a lot of land. Now in this scenario, the tenant actually owns the structure, so they're gonna be responsible for everything associated with the structure, whether it's interior or exterior of that property. So if something's leaking or you know a leaky toilet or something's broke inside, they own that complete structure. On the other hand, the landlord is only responsible for essentially the infrastructure, the utilities, the overall maintenance of the park. If there's any amenities like a pool or playground, or they're gonna be responsible for those items within the park as well as um, you know, road systems going throughout, lighting, lawn and land maintenance, anything associated with the overall park the landlord's responsible for and the tenant is responsible for their own structure. Gross revenue in these parks are traditionally less, but you deal with a lot less headaches. There's usually more stability in these types of parks because the actual tenant does own the structure. So if the tenant does want to move out, they have really two options. Number one is to actually uh, spend several thousand dollars to move the actual structure to another park or another plot of land or find a buyer for their structure who's willing to assume and take over essentially the lot lease payments. Extremely passive and low maintenance. Now the second option are park owned. Park owned is essentially the landlord or the investor actually owns the structures. Typically these are a lot more management and maintenance intensive because at the end of the day, they're responsible for doing all the repairs associated with the structures themselves. Also, your payroll tends to be a little bit higher because you do have to hire more manpower as well as uh, hopefully having a reserve account for the necessary repairs and future repairs of, these, uh, of the structures. The positive side of these parks is usually the revenue and net income is usually higher um, because you are providing not just the lot for rent but the actual structure as well. And the third type is essentially a combination of both where you have a combination of lot rent as well as park owned units. Um, over the years I've worked with several investors and a lot of them, I'd say at least 80% of them tend to want to tra transition out of um, being a hybrid so they'll either go in one direction or the other so for example if uh, you had a 50 unit park and 40 units were uh, lot rent and then there were 10 that were uh, park owned what the landlord or new investor would try to do is those 10 they would go in fix them up make them really nice and then sell them to somebody that would buy the entire structure in many cases they would even offer owner financing for the structure as well so um, the potential investor could have revenue off of interest for the owner finance portion of the actual structure plus their lot rent and then on the flip side you have some investors that would come into parks and they would want to make them primarily all park owns they would try to buy out those people fix those units up and then convert them into just complete annual rentals. I even had one investor up in Sarasota who turned his mobile home park. It was primarily all park owned already and uh, it, was, it was a bit run down but the location was fantastic and what he did was he went into every single unit and really just decked out these units, put in uh, stainless steel appliances, really made these things look beautiful. He put a little uh, cheeky HUD, he wound up putting a pool in the complex as well and uh, he did a lot of vacation rentals on these properties instead of annual leases. So that was another direction that I haven't seen before. Uh, many times the park owned units are on an annual basis, but because of the location and the location relative to the beaches, it made it as a great spot to use as uh, vacation rental properties. All right, so you're currently a real estate investor or uh, you're thinking about investing in real estate or maybe you're a real estate agent, wanna learn more about this. Here's my suggestion. 
contact every listing agent who has a mobile home park for sale, whether it's park owned or lot rent, gather their information from them, including profit and loss statements, any and all financials associated with the park, um, any and all specs, any deferred maintenance associated with it as well. Um, they may require you to sign an NDA agreement, which prevents you from dispersing this information without their permission. Um, so you probably will have to fill one of those out and sign off on it in order to gather this information from these listing agents. And then reach out to them, ask them questions, go and do a site visit with them, find out um, as much information as possible. If you don't know anything about mobile home parks, it's like anything else. The more that you study these things, the more you're gonna get familiar with them, the more you're gonna actually start spotting certain good, really good deals as well. So get out, take a look at these things, and at the end of the day, they're not that complicated. The complications start coming into play with um, deferred maintenance, like uh, cert, you know how many septic tanks are on the property, and if um, if some of them need to be replaced. Any of the big high ticket items, you that's where you can get a lot of a lot of trouble as a new real estate investor on something like this on mobile home parks. So you want to make sure that uh, you start studying these things, learning more about them. If uh, even if you don't have the funds or you don't have the investor backings to to even uh, buy these properties, it doesn't hurt to study them. Another thing you want to look at when you're analyzing these parks is you know where are they at with lot rent or uh, overall current market value for rentals for the structures. Are they at fair market value or based on the surrounding comparables, are they higher? Are they 15% higher? Um, you want to start looking at ways that you can increase revenue and one of the ways is finding undervalued uh, mobile home parks where you can go ahead and start incrementally increasing rents over time. Um, there's also plenty of other ways to to increase revenue. You might be able to add certain um, certain um, additional structures or additional pads as well as vending. You know, a lot of them will have vending machines for coin laundry and a whole host of other vending items, um, even pool tables, stuff like that and traditional vending machine. So you want to start calculating all the different ways that you can increase revenue on the park. Bottom line, mobile home parks provide investors incredible revenue if purchased right. Also at the end of this clip, I have another video on listing and selling mobile home parks. If you're a real estate agent or even an investor, you might want to go ahead and check that out. That's coming up next and I'll see you there. Thanks a lot. I appreciate the support.